Hello, I'm Christopher Saro, president of Whole Construction. I'm proud to announce that the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, in partnership with American Airlines and RW Airports, has announced $125 million commercial redevelopment of JFK's Terminal 8. As the project's construction partner, Hold Construction is pleased to partner with URW to introduce our new information and technical assistance program designed to connect you to opportunities available across the 24 month redevelopment of Terminal 8, all part of the Port Authority's $19 billion airport redevelopment program that is transforming New York's airport system. Working with our partners at the Port Authority, American Airlines, URW, and Phoenix Infrastructure, we have designed a special series of programs that will help you learn more about the project, the business and contracting opportunities that are right for your company, and how your business can participate. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to partnering together. Hello, and welcome to today's JFK Terminal 8 information session. Please join Holt Construction and its pre-qualification team to take a deep dive into the Terminal 8 pre-qualification process. Attendees will learn what to do, how to prepare the documents you need, what to do if you don't meet a specific requirement, how to update existing pre-qualification applications, how to get help when you have a question, and more. I'm Danielle Keen. Senior Contract Administrator at Holt Construction, and I'll be your moderator for today's session. I'd like to now introduce you to our panelists for today's session. Matt? Hello. Hello, everybody. My name is Matthew Ansami. I'm CFO of Holt Construction Corp. Hi, I'm Jessica Rondash, Director of Business Operations and Performance at Holt Construction. Okay, let's get started with the application. Jessica, can you walk us through it? Yes, so I'm gonna share my screen here with you. And first thing you're gonna do is fill out your company name. And then it's going to ask you to select your currency. You're gonna fill in if your company is a subsidiary or a child to a parent company. And on a lot of these questions, if this does not apply, you just click that button here to let us know it does not apply to your company. You're gonna give us the year and the state that your company was founded. You're going to give us your tax ID of your firm, your company's address, so you can add your main office and then other satellite offices that you have. You're going to give us the division of work you do, so basically your trades that you perform. You can pick multiple in here if your firm performs multiple trades. The markets that your company serves. The regions that your company serves, so what state you guys work in. How many employees does your company have? So your home office employees and then your field office employees as well. Here you'll fill out what enterprise business certifications you have. So this is where you're gonna to wanna to put your MBE, your WBE, your SDVOB and information such as that. You're gonna let us know what union affiliations you have, if any. What professional licenses you have. So this is gonna include any uh, contracting licenses, any state licenses, anything like that. You're gonna list your office locations in here. Any airports that you're badged and authorized to work in. Any industry affiliations or memberships. And then we have some questions here about doing business in different names and things like that. And then the other section here, contacts, you're gonna list all your company contacts that you would like in here. So anyone that's your business contacts, anyone that is your prequal contacts or anything such as that. What sort of information do you have to list under the projects tab? So now we have the project tab where you're gonna fill out some information. So first we wanna know what your current estimated backlog is for projects that are currently in progress. I'd also just like to point out on all these sections, there's question tips in the lower left-hand corner. So that just gives some extra color to the questions if you're confused on anything. Then we're gonna ask you to provide some references of recently completed projects. So we want your projects from the last five years and at least three completed project references. And then finally, any additional project reference documents you would just like to include in your application. I see the legal section is up next. 
What legal information are you asking for from my company? An important section in the legal here is that we want a litigation log. So basically any claims or litigations that your company is going through right now. For example, if your company has been sued or is suing another company, we would want to know that. Now, this information is public information. So the most important thing here is that we want you to be honest. It, you will not be rejected just because you have litigation going on. What we want is honesty, because if we find out information that you didn't put on here, that's going to look worse than if you had litigation to begin with. So we just ask that you check any litigations you have going on and upload a log here so we have that information. And then also in the legal section, we have just some question and answers here. So it's gonna be very typical stuff. If your company has had any litigation or arbitration against it, have you ever been assessed liquidated damages on a project? Um, have your company or principals ever defaulted or been terminated on a contract? These are all gonna be yes, no, with the ability for you to explain any other options in here. Then we also have our Holt Master Agreement. This is basically our contract with you. We ask you to go to this website right here. It lists the password. You're gonna download the agreement based on the state you're performing work in. You're gonna sign it and then upload it back in here. This will cover all future work that you do with us. And then on any project you're awarded a subcontract on, you're gonna get a project specific subcontract that will have information about that specific project. And then here, we also just ask that you provide any additional information that you feel would help us make a decision on whether we should pre-qualify you or not. Next up is the safety section. Jessica, can you walk us through the safety section and explain how detailed must my health and safety plan be? So safety is gonna be one of the most important sections in the pre-qual. So first, we're gonna want you to provide a copy of your company's most recent EMR scores. EMR stands for Experience Modification Rating, and you can get that from your insurance company. The only companies that would not have an EMR are newer companies with less than three years in business or companies with less than 11 people on staff. The next section here, we're gonna ask for your OSHA 300 results and your OSHA 300A logs. This is going to be your all your recordable incidents that you have going on right now. So this is something that you submit to OSHA every year, and we're gonna ask you to upload a copy of it here as well. Then we're gonna ask for your DART and your TRIR for the last five years. Down here gives a description of what each of those are and the way you can calculate them. You can also get this information from your insurance company if you're confused. Then we're gonna ask you here to provide a list of your OSHA violations from the last three years. So last three years previous from the date of this application. We're gonna want a copy of your current safety manual. So this is gonna be your demonstrated compliance with federal and state safety laws. So we're gonna want a copy of your entire company safety manual. Then we want here a list of the contact information of your company officer who oversees your safety program. So your safety director, whoever that is that oversees your safety program in case we need to reach out to them. If you don't have a safety officer or department, just list here the name of the person inside of your company who oversees your safety policy for you. Then we're gonna ask you to upload a copy of your OSHA compliant injury and illness protocol. So if you need to view an example of what that would be, we have one here. You could download a copy of this right here and you can use that to create an OSHA injury and illness protocol for your company. Then we're gonna want your COVID-19 protocol policy as well. So you can upload that here. And then finally, we just have some questions here that you're answering all of these to the best of your ability. Um, answering if you've had any fatalities recently, things such as that. You're going to answer again, yes, no to these with the ability to add some description in here if you need to. Let's talk about insurance. Jessica, what insurance information do we need to include? And if I don't meet the requirement, and if I don't have a contract with Holt, will I be permitted to increase my insurance pending a contract offer? I'm going to go through all the things we ask for in the insurance section. The most important thing, though, is if something, um, if you don't have something, just put NA in the field and we'll assess it when we review it. If you don't have our limits, 
submit to us what you do have so we can assess that. It might be if you're doing a smaller portion of work, we can work with your lower limits, or we may ask that you get a letter from your insur insurance company letting us know that if you are awarded a project, you can increase your insurance to hit our limits. So the rule of thumb is submit us whatever you have, and then we'll review it on our end. But to go through what we are requesting here, we're going to want the information from your broker or agency that you use. So the name of the broker or agency, the contact information that you have for your contact there. Then we're going to ask you for details of your surety or bonding program. So the current state of your surety company, who the contact is there, what your single project and aggregate bonding capacity is. And you can also upload a copy of your surety letter here. Then we're going to ask you to attach a sample of your insurance. Our limits are general liability of one million, auto and workers comp of a million each, and then five million of umbrella. But again, upload what you have and we will assess that on our end. Then we want a copy of your actual insurance policy. So your commercial liability, your auto liability, umbrella, workers comp, and pollution liability or professional liability if that applies to your company. Then we're going to ask you to download a copy of our Holt COI packet, which you can find here. You're going to fill that out and then upload it back into the application here. And then finally, we're just going to ask this one question here, if you're going to have a third party delivering materials to the job site, a yes or no question. So that's what we have for the insurance portion of the application. The next topic are financials. Matt, can you walk us through the financial section and what documents are required? First thing you're going to do is upload a W-9, which is your IRS document, um, which has your tax identification number on it. And it also um, lets us know if you are incorporated, if you're a sole proprietor or an LLC partnership, et cetera. Then you want, we want information about your bank, your total line of credit and your available credit. We also need a, bank contact in the event that we would be reaching out to them with any questions that we may have. Uh, they may in turn contact you and let you know that we are inquiring and ask your permission to speak with us. So we do want to see your historical information or financials. If you have reviewed financials or audited financials, preferably audited financials, um, we would like to see them. You can upload those. Um, audited financials are prepared by a CPA and they give a certain level of assurance that provides us with a, a basis to make uh, determinations on whether or not you, the company or your company has the cash flow to fund you through the job. If you can't um, obtain uh, CPA prepared financials, uh, audited financials. There are reviewed financials that you can get from a CPA or an outside uh, CPA. Um, we will look at um, compiled, which are not reviewed by a um, CPA. However, um, we will need additional information to provide us with a more comprehensive look at your company in the absence of having reviewed or audited financials. If you have a Dun & Bradstreet number, we would like that. Um, we do run a Dun & Bradstreet um, report on our vendors time to time. <clears throat> so that is important and that provides us another uh, look in seeing what your historically, uh, your, your trade references are saying it's, and your pay um, history is with those trades. Um, it gives us information regarding uh, credit limit and other information. It's not always very, it, we can't rely totally on uh, the DNB, but we use it in conjunction with these other resources that you provide us. Um, again, we would like to know your what credit you're being extended from your vendors, and that's usually in your DNB. And if you have a bank line, that will be also uh, in a previous section, you would have uploaded that information. Thanks, Matt. Now let's tie up some loose ends. Stopping and starting. Jessica, can a contractor start the pre-qualification application and later return to fill in what's missing? 
Yes, yeah, so you can start the application and come back as many times as you need to. It will save whatever information you have entered so far, and it'll also let you know what sections you're missing, what you still need to fill out. So you could take as long as you need to and go back in as many times. And what happens after I submit my pre-qualification application once it's complete? And when will I hear that the application has been approved? So once you submit the application, and we're going to review it on our end. We have a couple of people that go through it. If they have any questions or need any revisions from you, they're going to send a note back to you. The application will come back into your queue and it'll show you what sections you have to revise. Other than that, if you're approved or not approved, you'll hear back from us in about two to three weeks and we'll let you know. And if there's ever a time where it's been longer than that and you haven't heard and you want to check, you can reach out to our contracts department at contracts at holtcc.com. Okay, good to know. If I hear back that my application wasn't approved and it was rejected, will I get feedback as to why? Yes, you can request a call with us and we'll go through whatever it was that we felt was deficient and we'll give you the opportunity to reapply if you'd like to. Okay, great. And final question, is it possible to update my information in the pre-qualification application and how do I update it in the future? Once you've submitted it to us, you can't update it unless we send it back to you. If it's something really important that you'd like to let us know, you can send us an email at contracts at holtcc.com. Other than that, you could wait until it's time for you to reapply or renew your application and then send the update in then. Okay, sounds great. Thank you both for your time today and explaining the application. Thank you. Thank you. everyone and thank you for joining us today. So we have some good questions that came in for Matt and Danielle. So let's start off with the first one. First question is, how do I start the pre-qualification process? So I'm going to take this one since I deal with introductions. Um, the way it begins is specific to this project um, and specific to the Holt work that we're doing right now. Um, that's going to be happening, you're going to want to email info T8 at rfwconsultants.com, request to get a pre-qualification package with Holt Construction. What they'll do is they'll reach out to myself or Jessica, and then on our side, we'll actually send the email off to our contracts department, which is Danielle and her team as well. And from there, they're going to send you the link to the application so you can begin it. Next question is, does pre-qualifying with Holt Construction enable me to work on projects beyond Terminal 8? Do you want to take this one, Danielle? Yes, definitely. It definitely allows you to uh, bid on all uh, work and projects that Holt is uh, participating in, so uh, it's worth the effort. Perfect. Um, and then we have, what happens if I don't get pre-qualified? Can I try again? Yes, definitely. If uh, for some reason, your pre-qualification application um, isn't approved on the first pass. Our goal is to approve it and get you pre-qualified. So we want to communicate uh, what was maybe deficient, and we'll work with you to uh, fix that and reapply. Thank you, Danielle. I have another one for you. Um, is there someone who can help me fill out my pre-qualification package? Yes, that's me and my colleague Dan in the contracts office. Uh, so please, please email contracts at holtcc.com. We are always available to answer any questions that you have and go through the application with you. And then we have a, a question in regards to contacting if there are any questions. Danielle just gave you guys the email. So if there is questions or you're um, unsure of how to go about filling out some of the items in the package, just email our contracts department. You'll also get their contact info when we initially send the pre-qualification application to you. So you'll have everybody and the team that can assist you with that. Um, where do you find the application? Again, email RFW's um, email. They'll email us saying you're interested and then we'll send you the link so that way you can apply um, to be pre-qualified with our team. Um, 
I am a company that uh, is professional services. I'm not a construction trade. Many of the questions do not apply to me. Is there a different or streamlined application that I would need to fill out? Danielle? Yes. Yeah, we have um, three different applications already set up depending on your company type. We have for uh, regular subcontractors an application. We have a supply, material supply only application. And we do also have a service only application. And to kind of piggyback off of uh, Danielle's uh, comments, what you should do when you do email us to get pre-qualified, just state whether you're a subcontractor, supplier, or vendor. That way it's easier for us to give you the correct application versus sending you a subcontractor application where it doesn't apply to the suppliers. Um, next question is, my company is relatively new. I am. I just recently got certified with Ford Authority. What are the obstacles I'll be facing that um, my company hasn't done projects of this scope as of yet? So again, um, if you get pre-qualified with us and we send out the bid packages, if your scope pertains to the project, um, you have the ability to see what the scope includes. And if it's something that is too much for you or um, you're not sure it fits correctly for your company, um, just reach out to us um, with any questions you may have. That's the best way to go about it. Um, even if you if you do not um, want to work on this specific project, there might be other opportunities available. What we'll also do is anytime you reach out to RFW, there again, Westfield's project is the tenant uh, concessions. There are going to be uh, scopes over there that you might have a smaller package um, that we could get you in touch with the tenants and their GCs for their specific scope. Um, if you have been pre-qualified with AECOM on TradeTap, what else do we have to do? So again, TradeTap is kind of a standard across the board in this industry. Um, if you're pre-qualified with AECOM, you're already in TradeTap system. So when you get our application, each application for each GC is going to be standard. However, they will have their own specific requests and questions on their application. So it differs from each firm that you're applying with. Again, best thing you could do is just reach out, say you want to get pre-qualified with Holt, and we'll send you the specific uh, pre-qualification application through TradeTap for us as the GC. Um, if a company is entered into a formal mentor protege program with a prime contractor, such as Stark Tech, but not existing project experience as their own business, will that help with pre-qualifying? So again, any projects that you are working on, as Jessica noted in the session, you're going to want to list out. I would suggest your specific firm list it out um, whenever you do get the pre-qualification application uh, with us. What are the requirements for a WMAB for this project? Um, again, um, this session is more specific to uh, pre-qualification and how to go about filling out a pre-qualification app. Please reach out to RFW at info T8 at rfwconsultants.com and they can assist you with answering that question. Regarding the credit line and history, what are options available to us to perform the work? Should we lack a substantial initial capital to perform the work? Matt, this one's for you. Um, in the absence of a credit line, um, we would we'd still want to um, contact your bank and get some information on you, um, on your company. Uh, also, I mean, every, every time we look at something, even if somebody does not qualify to bid um, work across the board, we might have project exemptions granted. And that's not done um, lightly what we do is we will look at each individual subcontractor and in some instances we will also award work in smaller scopes to accommodate basically a courting of that subcontractor to see if how they perform and what they can handle we never want to put a subcontractor or a vendor in a position where it's going to create a financial stress stress or instability we want to put them in the best position to succeed so we look at it from that perspective because the team doesn't succeed unless everybody on the team participates and, and is successful. Thank you, Matt. Um, Danielle, I have another question <laughs> for you. I got that. <laughs> You're popular today. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are the requirements for pre-qualifications and how can these requirements be met? 
So oh. I'm assuming there's yes. plenty of requirements. So do you want to touch on a few? I was going to say um, there are several requirements. I'll tell you that your application is reviewed by five different um, kind of sections. So we have a safety review. So there's going to be various safety uh, information and requirements, a financial review, a legal review, a contract review, which is kind of miscellaneous, as well as an insurance review. So there's uh, a lot of requirements within those categories. Uh, if you have any specific questions about a requirement, if you want to check to see if you'll meet those requirements, you can email contracts at holtcc.com and we can uh, get into that in uh, more detail. Thank you, Danielle. Um, when is the deadline for the application? So there isn't a set deadline if there's a project that you want to uh, bid on and are not pre-qualified with us what we'll do is we'll send you the pre-qualification application, but the quicker you get in all the information and you submit it, the the quicker you get on those bid packages. Now, um, I suggest as soon as you get it, work on it right away. That way, if there are any issues that do arise, we can resolve them quickly with our teams for you. Um, and that's it for questions. So I think this was a great session, uh, very informative. We get a lot of questions about pre-qualification. Again, this is just standard across the board. So thank you, Danielle, and thank you, Matt, for, for doing this today. Um, thank you for everybody for joining. Uh, next week, we have a building connected walkthrough. So this is where the bid packages are going to be accessible to you subcontractors and suppliers. This is going to be a walkthrough and step-by-step -step of how to go about using building connected and uh, all the items that you'll see in regards to bid packages. And that will be next week, next Thursday from 12 to 1. Um, go to the, uh, the new JFKT8.com email to register, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm.